Are humans an advanced species? Are we an intelligent species? Are we a friendly species? <laughs> well, I guess it depends on who you ask. I asked you guys on Instagram to describe the human species in one word, and I got a lot of interesting answers. And well, I totally get it. I have spent the better half of the past 15 months researching everything from human evolution, free will, space travel, thought experiments, you name it. So I feel like I get a say in this one. And the word I would choose if I had to pick only one is that we are explorers. Now, that might seem pretty basic, but hear me out. One random day about 90,000 years ago, the very first Homo sapiens left the plains of Africa, and we have not stopped exploring ever since. Our lands, our ocean, our skies, our solar system, the molecules that make up our bodies, everything that we can get our hands on. Now, of course, there are pros and cons to this, but we had to do this because A, the desire to learn more is just about as human as human nature can get, and B, because exploration was essential for our survival. Over time, empires and groups who were used to explore were typically met by larger and stronger groups who had made it a priority, and a lot of the time it didn't work out too well for them. Which is important for where this video is going. Exploration drives trade, it generates wealth, it answers questions, and it gives us context to who, what, and where we are. And while humans can be by curious and all of the other colorful words you guys used to describe us, it's hard to deny the fact that in 90,000 years or less than 5,000 generations, we were able to colonize the entire planet, invent radios, rocket ships, the internet, and artificial intelligence is really impressive. So give yourself a pat on the back. Seeing as we are the only intelligent species we know of, and we are the most advanced we've ever been, you could argue that we are the epitome of intelligence in our universe. Except there's one problem. There are more stars in our universe than there are grains of sand here on Earth. That is this number, by the way. And on average, each of those stars has at least one planet and one moon. Do you think that intelligent life exists out in the universe? Because 65% of Americans say yes, intelligent life does exist on other planets. And scientists really started to take that seriously in the 1960s, 10 years after Enrico Fermi asked the famous question, where are all the aliens? And we've been searching for them ever since. The 60s are really important to this story for a number of reasons, and I think a lot of that can be seen in the culture of the time, because it was a decade of major social, cultural, and political change, a time of optimism, out-of-the-box thinking, liberation, equality, environmental consciousness, and, uh, well, maybe some other things. <laughs> now, there was still quite a bit of conflict, but the overall consensus was that humanity was on a positive trajectory. And I will bet you money that if I had Instagram back then and I had asked them the same question, the responses would have been a lot more positive. The economy was booming, there were rapid advancements in technology, the civil rights movement was in full swing. We had the first human space flight in 1961 and landed the first person on the moon only eight years later. That's one small step for man, one so it's no surprise really that this generation of people who were so focused on increasing human consciousness, harmony, and knowledge really started taking the search for alien life seriously. But when it actually comes down to it, what should we be looking for? That was one of the questions asked by Frank Drake, one of the founders of the SETI Institute, who still works with NASA today. And if that name sounds familiar, it's not because he was related to the Canadian rapper Aubrey Drake, but because he was the creator of the Drake Equation, which uses a number of different factors to give us the most accurate estimation of how many intelligent species there are in our universe. Drake calculated that there were 10,000 in the Milky Way alone. But here's the problem. If we do find evidence of intelligent alien life out there, there is a 0% chance that we will be technologically equal. Again, humans have only been around for 0.0015% of the entire time the universe has been here, so imagine what a species who had over a million years of technological evolution could achieve. Well, that's exactly what Nikolai Kardashev, a Soviet astrophysicist, came up with in his 1964 paper, Transmission of Information by Extraterrestrial Civilizations. Now, this paper is most famous for outlining what we now call the Kardashev scale, which we'll touch on in a second. Now, what you might not know is that in this paper, he outlined a potential technology called VLBI that was used 55 years later to take our first ever picture of a black hole. Kardashev argued that since our energy consumption has grown exponentially alongside technological advancement, that any other intelligent life form in the universe would probably function the same, and their level of progress would be directly related to the amount of energy that they can harness and consume, and the Kardashev scale was born. 
The least advanced out of the three, a Type 1 civilization, is able to use up and control 100% of its home planet's renewable energy through wind, water, and solar. Type 1s have full control over their planet's climate and natural forces, and most likely have the technology to terraform nearby planets in their solar system. NASA thinks that we'll reach Type 1 by the year 2371, after we've boosted our energy production over 10,000 times. Type 2 civilizations are able to use up and control 100% of the energy from its host star and transmit it across multiple home planets. As a reminder, stars are humongous, and to give you an idea of just how much energy a star puts out, our sun's energy output every second is about 1 million times greater than the energy consumed by the entire human population every year. And to capture all of this energy would take an insane amount of technology, which is why Freeman Dyson proposed the Dyson Sphere, a solar panel-like megastructure built around a star to absorb all of its energy and transmit it back. A Type 3 civilization is able to use up and control 100% of the energy from its host galaxy and transmit it wherever it would like. This civilization would span across hundreds of millions of different planets and solar systems and have developed levels of being completely unimaginable to us. Now, at first, a galactic civilization might seem completely out of the realm of reality, but if we were able to create multi-generational spacecrafts, we could colonize the entire Milky Way galaxy in just 2 million years. To put that into perspective, the dinosaurs were around for 100 165 million years, and they have nothing to show for it except for a crater in Mexico. So in the grand scheme of things, two million years really is nothing. Now, here's the next problem, and something that we've learned over the course of human history. Typically, when you push out into new lands and territories, you're bound to run into someone or something. And like I said at the start of this video, a lot of the time that didn't work out too well for at least one of the groups involved. Scientists have been trying to come up with an answer to Enrico Fermi's question for decades now, and still we have nothing. The universe is seemingly silent when the Drake equation says that it should be packed with alien life. Well, one of the more popular theories that actually got the SETI Institute to change its policies is called the Dark Forest Theory. It's based on a part of game theory known as games of incomplete information and assumes the following things. One, that all life desires to stay alive. Two, there is no way to know if an alien civilization will destroy you, given the chance. And three, since you have no assurance that they won't harm you, the safest course of action is to destroy them. The Dark Forest theory assumes that the universe is as full as Frank Drake predicted, but all of the civilizations have chosen to stay in hiding. The groups that did not practice this caution or went out to explore were either destroyed or they were the destroyer. And this is no joke. The SETI says this is a very probable theory, and they've made their official policy to only collect information and to never respond to any evidence of alien life, out of fear that it will be the end of Earth as we know it. But again, this is a very human way of thinking. We assume that because we were mostly violent and unforgiving when it came to our exploration, that any other species would act the same. But as we've matured, we've become incredibly less violent. And I know it might not always seem like it, and there is still a lot of conflict in the world, but we are closer than ever to actually achieving world peace. And if there is a correlation between progress and peace, just like energy, it's safe to assume that any advanced civilization who has the technology to detect us is waiting, observing, and hiding until we've reached a certain level. Sort of like a baby animal in a zoo. They're letting us mature and develop our skills before we can be released into the wild with the rest of the other animals. And at the end of the day, that's really what all of this is about anyway. Things like the Drake equation and the Kardashev scale and the Fermi paradox aren't just about helping us identify what to look for, because in reality, we have no freaking clue. <laughs> but they also provide us with an optimistic outlook for our own future and all of the things we might one day be able to accomplish. For all we know, we are the very first intelligent civilization that's made it this far. And maybe type 1 civilizations don't exist anywhere in our universe, but Kardashev provided us with a goal and a framework to be the first. We could be the first civilization that works in harmony and protects our planet, and spreads out across the solar system and beyond, and lasts for thousands and millions of years. The Kardashev scale is supposed to serve as a reminder that the future doesn't have to be bleak, and that there's still so much out there for us to explore. And that one day, we might actually have the opportunity to explore it if we don't f*** it up.